Ever try to teach an old dog new tricks? Ever try to teach object-oriented developers functional programming? I've thought a lot about this problem over the years. This is Bruce, and we're Grokken. At Groxio, our bread and butter is teaching object-oriented developers functional programming. Whether they're coming from Java or Ruby or other languages, it really doesn't matter. Many of the new developers that we're bringing into the functional ecosystem have to learn it for the first time, usually from object-oriented languages. The world's most popular languages right now are Python and JavaScript, and you can even say that Ruby and Java are up there as well. And we spend a lot of time thinking about how to teach these programmers functional programming. Let me show you how. This is an example actually built by Groxio students. And most people, when they think about layering software, they think about having modules. So this is a point module, and this is a robot module, but it's really more than that. It really starts with data. So each one of the modules in my Elixir application, and you can organize Ruby in exactly the same way, I'm working with the same data type all the way through it. So this type of a function is a constructor. It creates the data type in the first place from convenient inputs. In this case, I have X and Y, and I create a point. These functions are called reducers. This is actually one function called move to because it has one, two arguments, and Elixir will execute the first function head that matches. And in this case, the first argument is always the data type of our module. And each one of these returns the data type of the module. And the last type of function consumes the data type of the module, in this case, a point, which is a tuple with two elements, and it returns some other form. And in this case, it returns a beautiful rendering of the point. And then I can put the show into action. So in this case, this show accepts a point and it returns a rendering of the point in the form of an SVG graphic. So I can execute that. You can see that it renders my point right here. So even within a module, I am starting to layer. I start with their data structure and then I build functions that know how to build convert or transform the data structure. And this layering allows me to build things that work together. So you can see that this point.new flows into move north, flows into move east, and then finally moves into show. And then I can visualize the result. But this is only the first step of layering. So what I did in this case is we were trying to build a robot type structure. So in this case, the robot has a location, which is a point, a heading, which initially is north, but it can also be any other point at the compass. And then it has a history of all the points that this robot has visited. And so I can take advantage of all of the code that I wrote in point when I try to move my bot, right? So in this case, when I'm moving forward, that's this code right here, I take advantage of the point dot move. Now what's interesting is all of the students in this class were new to Elixir, but by learning how to layer the system, I could teach them concepts about data structures, about pattern matching, and they didn't have to deal with a lot of complexity at any given point. So if you take a look at this program, it looks complicated, but the students only had to focus on one of the concepts at any given time because we layered the software. By teaching people how to layer software, you're showing them how to organize their code and you're showing them how to hide complexity. That doesn't mean that they could take the complexity away. It just means that they could deal with less of the complexity at any given time. This is Bruce and we are Grokken.